Welcome. Today we're going to talk about derivatives and integrals of complex functions of a real variable, wt. So uh, recall what we have been studying for a while is functions like this, where we have z being a complex number, and then the output is also a complex number, so complex to complex. Now we're going to take a step back here and talk about something a little bit more, a uh, um, little simpler, where we have a, an input now that is a real number, and the output then is uh, you know some w that's a complex number. Okay, so we're what we're really talking about is is um, is a vector function w of t is equal to u of t plus i v of t. So that's simply a vector function. We could write that as u of t, oops u of t comma v of t, and we're, we're familiar with these as being just simply a uh, vector valued, uh, vector valued uh, functions. Okay, so for instance, in the plane, what we have is, you know, although we'll call this the imaginary axis, the v-axis, and that's the u-axis, uh, we can think of this as merely tracing a path where that may be t equals a, and that is t equals b. So it traces a path in the complex plane um, according to this vector value thing. So for t equals 0, you'd have the vector there, and then for some, or for some later point, uh, the vector would just evolve in time. And it would sort of travel along this path, kind of like a movie, uh, you know, like a particle motion. It's, this is particle motion. Okay. So let's talk about an example, a really simple example, would be um, e to the i t for t um, starting at 0, and then we're going to end at uh, 2 pi. Okay, let's talk about this example, pretty straightforward. Okay, so for t equals 0, we have this function is e to the i t is equal to, we can write that as uh, cosine t comma sine t. Okay, all right, so that's the function. Uh, and that simply starts here at, uh, that's 1, 1, 0. And as, as time goes forward, by the time we get to t is equal to pi halves, we've gone to the top of the circle, and it simply traces out the unit circle like that. So that would be finally t equals 2 pi. And if we were to go further beyond 2 pi, of course, we would just keep wrapping around the circle, but we can kind of put an arrow on this path to kind of indicate the direction of travel of this of this point in space in uh, in, in two-dimensional space that is rendered in the complex plane okay so there's a good example of that sort of thing um, now what we also want to talk about is derivatives oh, oh, before we talk about derivatives let's talk about one more example actually sorry about that let's talk about uh, now w of t is equal to e to the z naught t. Okay, so z naught now is just a fixed value. It's going to be a plus i b. Right, we can write this function as e to the a t uh, times the vector uh, cosine b t comma sine b t. Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated than we've seen before. Uh, and uh, this looks fairly straightforward, though. Let's see if we can uh, find out uh, a way to think about this. Now, clearly, this is what you could call the R, the modulus of the complex number. So um, if I were to take the modulus of this function, it would simply be, oh, uh, it would simply be e to the a t. Okay, right. Um, uh, and so that reflects the magnitude. So let's just pick a few values. Let's talk about a equal to 0, uh, in which case you have e to the 0 t is equal to 1. So the modulus is always 1 for every value of time. Likewise, I'm going to take b to be positive, and of course we'd have a situation that looks just like we had before. It would trace out a unit circle and go back. But now you'd start at t equals 0 here, and you'd end at t equals 2 pi over b. Okay, so that's with b being positive. Now, if b were negative, you would simply go the opposite direction around the circle. Okay, so depending on uh, which way. So that would be uh, uh, 
uh, B is negative, and there would be B positive on that side. All right, now let's try A is greater than zero, all right, in which case we'd have some situation like this. So then our modulus then, if you want to call that R of T, is going to be, e, is going to equal E to the A T. Now it'll be growing at, over time, so let's say I'll start there at one comma zero, and I'm going to keep uh, B greater than zero from here on out. And it will be like this. It'll spiral out like that as time goes forward. And at that point there, you're going to again be at 2 pi over b. And here, you'll be at uh, t is equal to 4 pi over b, and so on and so forth, as it keeps going out. OK, finally, one last one. I'll do it over here. And that will be a is less than 0. And of course, you get the opposite result, r of t, the modulus, if you will, of this vector value function. Would be e to the uh, will be equal e to the negative absolute value of t. Okay, so this would be shrinking. Uh, it would be a shrinking spiral. So we could write it as follows. There you are at one zero at time t, and you'd be going in like that, so on and so forth like that. So that's what it would look like. All right, so all of these are just contours that are in the complex plane, but they're essentially complex valued functions. All right, now let's talk about um, let's talk about uh, diff derivatives. Derivatives of w t. Okay, so um, remember w of t is equal to u of t uh, plus i v of t. And provided that u and v are both differentiable, we can write d w dt simply as um, du dt plus i dv dt. We might want to simplify our thing and just call that u prime plus i v prime. Okay. So uh, what kind of uh, information does this give? Let's go back. Uh, you know, so what kind of information does this give? Uh, you know, so I want to know what what this indicates in the complex plane. And as you can imagine, it's the vector valued function, and this is a vector valued function. This gives us our uh, sort of a tangent vector to the contour of um, W of t. Okay, so let's just get an example of that here. We'll go back to our example W t is equal to e to the i t. Okay. We can rewrite that as, again, the vector value, cosine t sine t. All right, and then uh, dw dt, then, it will be a vector valued function that's equal to, um, uh, we'll write it as uh, it's going to be negative sine t comma cosine t. And if we draw that out, in the plane just like we have before. Here is the contour going around here. That, that's the contour. And if I start at, at t equals 0, if I look at this, uh, where, what, where is this pointing? I can kind of draw it on here as a vector that's emanating right from that point. And we can see that as, if t is equal to 0, we have nothing in the horizontal component, but uh, it's unit length in the vertical component. So we can draw it kind of like that. So at t equals uh, pi over 4, of course, it's going to be pointing this way and then like that. And we could keep, uh, you could figure out pretty easily that, the, that this really is the tangent vector to this contour right here. Okay, so now we have a great interpretation of what these, uh, what derivatives of functions of a complex variables look like. And it, again, it's, it's exactly as you had remembered doing this. For, for vector value functions in, 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 the, in a plane R2, and just now that we're labeling our vertical axis with a i. But let's just see how the complex arithmetic works. What if I take this derivative in terms of, not in terms of the vector valued uh, functions as u and v, right? But now just take it in terms of this uh, function here using our, our rules of differentiability for analytic functions. And that, of course, is going to be um, this is going to be e to the i t times the chain rule times i. Okay, so let's see what that would, so that of course looks like i times u comma, or sorry, 
u plus i v, like that. And of course that is the same thing as um, negative v plus i u. And of course that gets us exactly the same answer as we got by taking the derivative component wise. We see that that is of course uh, negative uh, sine uh, t plus i cosine t, which is exactly the same as we got from, from, uh, from taking the derivative component wise. So now you see we have a really nice uh, a way of, of, of the complex arithmetic is making things quite simple to do. Uh, um, things that we would have otherwise have to handle component wise we can do now by just using a derivative in the, uh, for an analytic function. Okay. So let's uh, now, um, now let's talk about integrals. All right, so we can take derivatives. Uh, w prime is simply u prime plus v prime, uh, where there's an i there. So we can imagine we can do the same thing with integrals. If I want to take the integral from a to b of w of t dt, this is the same thing as taking two real valued integrals integral from a to b of u of t dt plus i integral a to b of v of t dt. So there's nothing incredibly illuminating going on here. Um, let's just try an example really quick. Let's take, uh, let's take w of t is equal to uh, 1 plus i t to the second power. We can rewrite this as 1 plus t squared uh, plus i times 2t. All right, so um, let's take the integral from 0 to 1. And that's simply going to be the integral of these two pieces here. So that will be t plus t to the third power over 3. We're going to take that from 0 to 1. Right there. Plus i um, of t, integral from 0 to 1. And we see pretty clearly that's going to be 1 plus 1 third. Uh, plus i uh, times 1. Okay, so that's the result we get. So integrals, again, are very straightforward um, uh, for these type of functions. So uh, now we have a really nice, clear uh, understanding of what's going on here. All right, so the, the, the idea then is, um, so for derivatives, we had a really clear understanding of what that meant. But what about integrals? What, what, what is an integral saying? We're essentially, so integrals of a real variable, so let's just go to a new page. So meaning of integrals. So let's go to real variable, uh, real, real functions. So if I have f of x, I'm going to integrate it from a to b, dx. Let's say I just divide by b over a, right? b minus a, I should say. This, of course, equals the average value of a of of f over the interval uh, a to b okay so if, again if you have some function like this you're going to take its um, a to b we're going to sample all those points over that point and weight them by uh, how how much uh, we'll break it up in intervals right that's what a what a what a um, integral is and essentially, uh, the average value will be always, as long as the function is continuously integrable, there's some average value. Um, and there's usually some point, well, at least for a continuous integrable function, there's always going to be a point C with, um, within that interval that's equal to the average. And that's called, that's called the mean mean value theorem uh, for integrals. All right, the idea that, um, so when we take an integral of a function, essentially we're sampling the value of that function over an interval and, and adding them up and, and doing a, a sort of average. Okay, so that has, this is, uh, you know, fundamental to what we, we do with integration is we're always, av we're basically averaging a function. We're sampling at a bunch of points and adding them together. And then if we divide by the length of the interval, we get a true average. Okay. So the question then is, does a similar thing hold for complex functions? And the answer is no. Um, so the answer is no. And we'll just give it an example of why. All right. So 
what I'm saying is that um, uh, the average value f, uh, so if I take this integral, let's say a to b of w of t dt, uh, there does not, uh, n not necessarily can you find, uh, can you find, you know, some sort of average value uh, that's equal to some point uh, w uh, at some point t star, where t star is in the range uh, a to b. I should say those should be closed intervals. Okay. Um, uh, so let's just give an example of that. Let's go back to our, our W of t that we've used a few times now. That's e to the i t. We're going to take t on the interval, um, 0 to pi. Okay, so again, this traces out this arc in the complex plane, like that, uh, 1, 0 to uh, negative 1, 0. Okay, and of course, we're sampling values of this complex uh, this complex, we're, we're sampling values of complex numbers along that and adding them up, weighting them by the, the, uh, uh, the, the weight of, uh, of t. All right, so clearly the arc length of the path is equal to pi. That is the arc length there, right? It's half a circle, right? So uh, 2 pi over 2. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to actually go 1 over pi. That's going to be our, we're going to go from 0 to pi of um, e to the i t dt, which is the same thing as 1 over pi, integral is 0 to pi. of, um, And now we have to break it up into real and imaginary parts. There's the cosine t dt plus i, uh, integral is 0 to pi, sine t dt. Okay. So we can compute this pretty quick. That's going to be um, cosine. That's become sine t zero to pi, and then we have a minus i uh, cosine t zero to pi. Okay, uh, we can clearly see that that's going to be zero there. Um, and then for the remainder part, we, we can see that that's going to be uh, cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative that makes a positive 1. And then cosine 0, uh, we subtract that, and that's 1. So we get 2 over pi as the result. Uh, so 2 over pi i. Okay, so again, uh, the values. So where is 2 over pi i? 2 over pi i would be, so this is 2, and that's a, you know, essentially a 2 over uh, 3.14. All right, so that's going to be, uh, the, in terms of the modulus of this, right, the modulus of that is going to be less than 1. So the value is going to be somewhere around 2 thirds, so right about there. So that's, you know, 2 over pi i. We can see that point is not, nowhere on the actual curve that we integrated over. Um, so here's an example of the, the, there's no such thing as a mean value theorem. So when we sample this, this point, uh, um, this function e to the i t over this path, uh, the, when we, the integrated result that we get um, is not a point that was on the path. So that's an example of how the mean value theorem uh, doesn't cross over to integrals in the complex plane. So uh, that's just a, a caveat for understanding what an integral in the complex plane is. We're going to learn more about integration in the complex plane in the coming videos. Thank you very much.